And as you heard there, the medical care for the two affected Americans has already begun with their isolation on board the jet that is bringing them home. Marsha Bonner picks up tonight's team coverage to tell us more about how they will be treated for Ebola. Marsha? Well, much of the recommended treatment revolves around keeping health care workers and patient visitors from being exposed. It is as dangerous as it is colorful. This little virus can pack a deadly punch. As you get very sick, you get a fever, you have blood clotting abnormalities, you have a lot of bleeding. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in Atlanta has alerted healthcare workers to recognize fever and bleeding as possibly the Ebola virus at work. All they have to do is get into you through a break in the skin. They're not going to get through intact skin, but all of us have little cuts on our fingers. Your cuticles. Uh, your cuticle, so it can get in. If it gets into your eye, I mean, that's, if it splashes there, that's a mucous membrane, it gets in and it just progresses on like that. If someone is infected and in a public environment, for instance, a plane, they would need to be pulled and isolated. If someone is incubating it before they become ill and they come here on a plane and the time, uh, transit time from, uh, I was speaking with someone today from South Africa, let's say, for instance, to New York City is 17 hours in a plane. Well, as far as healing from an Ebola infection, hospitals in this country are better equipped with isolation rooms and we're well stocked with supplies. We do not reuse needles and we have protectors on those needles. But, Dr. Bernstein says, without a vaccine, supportive care is hydration and control of bleeding is how we care for anyone exposed to the virus. Marsha Bonhart, 2 News, working for you.